Yeah, I drew the short stick and get to talk about employee handbooks. So, you know, there's been a lot of business disruption with coronavirus and, you know, it's been fast paced up until now. But, you know, at a certain point, and it feels like it's starting to transition into that, you're going to have to accept the fact that you know, this is going to be kind of the new normal for, for a little bit. And that may uh, be a good time to consider getting written policies and procedures that put you in the best position to uh, navigate this coronavirus 19 issue. Now that may simply be, you know, separate written policies. Um, but, you know, if your employee handbook is starting to get up there in age, maybe now is a good time to consider fully revamping the employee handbook because a ton of new stuff for 2020 that needs to be in there. Uh, you know, and if you're bringing employees back to work or rehiring, it's a great time to consider making that change and rolling that out all at once. So some specific things that you can think about that you want to have policies on, you know, workplace safety, um, you're going to want to have written policies. And maybe if you have a, if you're in LA County and you have to do a social distancing protocol, or if you're in another county that has to have some related policy, you're already going to have that. Um, but it is a good idea to have, you know, written policies on PPE use uh, that communicates to the employee so they know the expectations uh, on PPE, on hygiene, and for how you're going to address uh, if an employee is sick at work and what you're going to do to protect the workplace. It's good for you. And it's also good to communicate to employees uh, so that they know that, that, that you're taking that safety seriously. Uh, another hot button issue that's going to come up with coronavirus is expense reimbursement. You know, uh, in California, businesses are required to reimburse employees for their necessary business expenses. And uh, to the extent that you're requiring or being required to provide your employees with PPE, um, you can either provide that or, you know, if you're having your employees get their own and bring it to work, you need to reimburse them for that. Um, uh, another kind of sneaky under the radar issue that I think is going to be big is, if, you know, if you're having workers who are working from home now, you need to consider whether that's going to trigger some expense reimbursement requirements. Already in California, you know, if your employee was using their cell phone for work, you are expected and should be reimbursed for that. But if they're working from home now, what about their, their internet? Um, you need to think about whether you are uh, reimbursing them for their use of, of that. And uh, I think that's going to be you know, something that's going to be subject to some litigation going forward. Uh, meal and rest breaks are always something that you want to keep top of mind and keep well policy documented. But now with coronavirus, you know, if you have a break room, you're going to have to rethink whether that's viable going forward. And if you're going to, are you going to close the break room or, or modify its use in some way, or are you going to make, designate new areas, maybe maybe close the break room and, and require employees to go outdoors uh, for their breaks. Uh, and then if the coronavirus has affected how you are staffing shifts, uh, you need to rethink whether your meal and rest break timing and scheduling accommodate that. And do you have to stagger meal and rest breaks to make sure that you're staying compliant with the, you know, the new work uh, situation? And then to the extent you're going to uh, consider workplace or COVID-19 testing or screening, you want to have written policies that explain what you're doing and, and uh, what the policy is uh, and the methodology so that it's you know, clear and upfront and you're protected and documented. You know, paid sick leave, um, to the extent that you um, are covered by one of these new paid sick leaves, you want to make sure that that's in the policy or in the handbook or you know, certainly that you have the poster up. And then if you have a significant amount of employees teleworking or working from home, what policies and procedures do you want to have in terms of, you know, assessing productivity and um, handling requests from employees to, to work from home, maybe that you weren't planning to have work from home? How, how can they get their expenses reimbursed? And if they're uh, non-exempt employees that you're having telework, uh, how are you going to monitor off the clock work issues to make sure that you're not having uh, minimum wage and overtime concerns? And then how are you going to address for your clients and customers, employees, confidentiality and privacy issues where employees who 
would be otherwise be handling information and work in your office now may be handling that at at their homes or maybe at Starbucks down the line. So things to think about and, and have written policies on to protect you and address these various concerns and others.